Hi everyone, my name is Mobin, and today we'll be going over the following concepts, ratios, rates, proportional relationships, and units. Let's start with what a unit is. A unit is a term used to describe a measurement or a quantity. For example, the unit used to measure distance are miles, kilometers, feet, and inches. The units used to measure time are seconds, minutes, hours, and days. Units are very important as they can completely change the meaning of what a number represents. Imagine if your teacher said that today's homework will take 30 to complete. 30 what? 30 minutes? 30 hours? 30 days? 30 years? Um, I'm sure we can assume that your teacher probably meant 30 minutes as 30 hours and 30 years is very unreasonable. However, in some settings, it's not a good idea to assume. Making that sort of assumption can cause big errors in the math. That's why you always want to check your units and make sure you're including them in your calculations. Now that we've clarified what units are, it's time to talk about ratios. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. It can be written in a few different ways. It can be written with a colon, a fraction, or a word phrase. For example, the ratio of 2 to 3 can be written as 2 colon 3, 2 divided by 3, or 2 to 3. Let's work on a problem together. If I had a bag of 10 red and 5 blue marbles that combined to 15 marbles, what would the ratio of red to blue marbles be? We can figure this out by taking the number of red marbles and dividing it by the number of blue marbles. We can then reduce the fraction. We know that both 10 and 5 share a greatest common factor of 5, so we can divide both by 5 and get 2 red marbles over 1 blue marble. So for every 2 red marble, there's 1 blue marble. Essentially, the number of red marbles is double the number of blue marbles. Looking back at our statement of 10 red and 5 blue, we can see that the red marbles are indeed double. Next, we're going to talk about proportions. Proportions are created when two ratios are equivalent. By equivalent, I mean they represent the same value after being reduced to simplest form. We can use the previous problem as an example. Remember how we had 10 red marbles over 5 blue ones, and then we were able to reduce that to 2 over 1? We can say that those are proportional because in simplest form, they are the same. In real life, proportions can be used to help adjust a recipe based on how much you want to make. Let's do a problem together. To make a bakery's signature chocolate muffins, a baker needs 2.5 ounces of chocolate for each muffin. How many pounds of chocolate are needed to make 48 signature chocolate muffins? Remember, one pound is equal to 16 ounces. First, we set the proportion in terms of 2.5 ounces of chocolate to one muffin. The proportion is equivalent to the unknown value of x ounces of chocolate to 48 muffins. To find out what x is, we can cross multiply to get 2.5 ounces of chocolate times 48 muffins equal to x ounces of chocolate times muffin. Since we want to find the value of x, we will divide both sides by one muffin to get x ounces of chocolate by itself. From there, we can multiply 2.5 ounces of chocolate by 48 to get 120 ounces of chocolate. Remember how we mentioned that one pound is equal to 16 ounces? We can use that to convert 120 ounces of chocolate to pounds by dividing 120 by 16 to get 7.5 pounds of chocolate. So to make 48 chocolate muffins, we need 7.5 pounds of chocolate. Now let's move on to rates. A rate can be a ratio or a quotient where the quantities have different units. How many cookies can you eat in one minute? I think I could eat 20 cookies in one minute. We could write that down in ratio form of 20 cookies divided by one minute or 20 cookies per minute. That's a rate. Let's practice using rates in a problem. A candle is made up of 17 ounces of wax. When the candle is burning, the amount of wax in the candle decreases by one ounce every four hours. If six ounces of wax remain in this candle, for how many hours has it been burning? Can you identify the rate in this problem? It's one ounce every four hours. So we're trying to figure out how many hours it's been burning for. We know that the candle started at 17 ounces and ended at six ounces. That's an 11 ounce decrease in wax. So now we need to figure out how much time it takes to lose 11 ounces if the wax decreases one ounce every four hours. We can set up the equation in a way where the ounces cancels out 
and only the hours remain by taking 11 ounces and multiplying it by four hours or over one ounce. Once the ounce is canceled out, only the hours remain. So 11 times four hours is equal to 44 hours. It takes 44 hours to decrease 11 ounces of wax. Thanks for watching. For more practice problems like the ones in this video and access to a 24 seven online practice tool, check out ACIT at the link below. ACIT is the ultimate study tool for the SATs and ACTs created by Juni Learning, an award-winning educational tech company that has helped thousands of students take their learning to the next level. Get a one week free trial period when you use the link in the description. Until next time.